Alrighty, welcome back everybody for another Jean d'Arc speedrun. Last time we got our very first world record with The Rising, and now we're going to be sad because one, we're doing The Siege of Paris, which is an incredibly difficult mission, probably the most difficult in Age of Kings. And two, in the run that I'm going to show you, I do get a world record, but alas, it does not qualify um, for the speedrun.net website because... Uh, I recorded this before, unfortunately, I knew that you had to play on an uh, exactly times two speed or fast speed uh, for the run to qualify. And I played on everywhere between uh, four times speed and 1.7 speed. But it's still a good time, and I wasn't able to get, uh, I wasn't able to replicate it uh, when I was doing fast speed, of course. So I'll show you that still, but I mean, the principles are still all going to be the same. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the scenario overview. So here we are in the scenario editor, and as you can see, once again, we start with an army, this one being actually uh, fairly large and what would appear to be impressive, and we are tasked with uh, busting out some refugees that are located throughout the city of Paris, which of course dominates most of the map. And the refugees are located, there are three here, there is one here, and there are six here. Once you uh, rescue six of them, you will then have to... Uh, Go to round here, where you'll must wait for the reinforcements from the uh, the King of France, which will come in the form of one militia and one scout cavalry. Rather disappointed by these pitiful reinforcements, you are then forced to flee Paris for the nearby Chateau of Compiègne, which is uh, you know over here to the east. Of course, you have to be fighting the uh, the British all along the way, and they are, for all intents and purposes, uh, post imperial age. Uh, as are the Burgundians, who are going to be hanging out over here once you make it uh, near to Compiègne. And yeah, it's just a really hard scenario because you get no reinforcements or uh, villagers or even monks. So, the game plan. Uh, as this is kind of a get from point A to point B scenario, uh, I'll show you the path that I took. Now, uh, I actually discovered this path as a kid, way before I knew that speedrunning was a thing. Uh, but this is actually the path of least resistance, as they say. So we're going to take our whole army. And we're going to go, uh, you know, we're going to hug the edge of the map because we have no way to cross the Seine River except at uh, this area here where I believe this is supposed to be uh, Notre Dame. But yeah, we cross the edge of the map here making sure we don't run into the line of fire of these longbowmen. Uh, these longbowmen will of course be very, very annoying as they have 12 range and your crossbowmen only deal one damage to them. You only have post-castle age upgrades. Your units, some of them might be imperial age units, but you only have like plus two, plus two and stuff like that. So you're really heavily outgunned. But yeah, you crawl along the edge of the map until you get to around here. And being sure to not go over here because there's like a bajillion defensive buildings over here, uh, you can start to enter Paris from uh, this angle. Uh, there are only, what, three longbowmen and f six champions uh, defending this area. If you're, you know, careful to stay out of line of sight of, you know, the other units and whatnot. And then as, you know, much, much more manageable. So what we're going to do is once everyone's kind of hanging out over here, we'll send Joan as she is uh, a hero unit and will regenerate HP. We'll have her kindly knock on the gate over here and all these units will run out. And then once the units are safely out of the, uh, out of the city, we will be able to kill them with the rest of our army. The English occupying Paris, uh, they don't produce anything, uh, nor do their soldiers move unless, you know, you uh, come into sight of them. So literally it's just like a, an obstacle course, like a gauntlet, uh, as it were. So we just want to try to avoid as many troops as possible. Anyway, uh, there's a double gate here. Otherwise, I would just say knock down the gate. But since there are two gates, we're just going to knock down this tile of wall here because it's easier to click than the ones behind it. And then uh, we'll go in and then we can instantly nab these six villagers. Now, if this very, very intense, strongly held uh, British city, what is the most terrifying thing of all to deal with? Is it the onagers? The monks? No, it's the random galleons, because with the power of AI micro, these galleons uh, more or less cannot be killed. At least not unless you get really lucky. Same with this cannon galleon. Uh, so you're pretty much stuck being constantly bombarded by these as you make it to the San River. And remember, if you lose a villager, and these are just regular old villagers, uh, you lose if you lose one villager. So you have to be very, very careful. So we're going to send in our cavalry. Gonna have one uh, cavalier or paladin snipe the siege onager, and then we're gonna send everybody else um, over here 
try and take down all these monks and these champions, maybe even take down like this siege onager as well. Uh, just sort of clear the way for everybody else. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send in our uh, bombard cannons, you know, pretty much right behind the cavalry, as well as our infantry. And then uh, we'll take down these towers and this tower. And by then the uh, the king's men should have arrived and uh, you need to go, 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 go. Then you'll try and take, you know, whatever remnants you can and go across the bridge and then go to your right. Here there will be uh, an onager that you will need to uh, kill. But then you'll get these reinforcements. They're not that great. They're just a bunch of men-at-arms. Uh, a couple knights, a couple throwing axemen, and a couple heavy scorpions. But, you know, there's something. And you can then kill the British longbowmen that are over here. And then you will not go the sort of uh, logical way out, which is, you know, through here and then through this gauntlet. Uh, the much, much easier way is to just cut a hole right here. And then, this is important, if one of your trebuchets is still alive, you can actually skip this whole area over here because there is one tree here and one tree here um, that if you knock down either of these you can run through. Now once the wall is down you can just send over your villagers and Joan and then you will need to make sure that they can get through the uh, Burgundian gauntlet so that they can get to uh, Compiègne. Now these Burgundian soldiers are going to essentially stay you know stationary until you approach. I can actually show you guys the specific area. Here we are. Once you have one object here, it doesn't matter if it's a villager or a uh, military unit, then Burgundian will uh, change stance with you to neutral and will also begin to attack Compiègne itself. Um, so we're just going to leave the rest of our army in Paris. We don't care about them anymore. Just the villagers and Joan. Joan will just make a beeline right for the castle. Well, once you get into this little flagged area, then you can go right to the castle. Uh, with the villagers, it's a little bit trickier because they're much slower and much weaker. However, because Burgundy is only neutral to you, uh, they won't actually attack the villagers. That does not mean the villagers are safe, however, because they have a bunch of siege onagers. And uh, yeah, those siege onagers can totally incidentally kill your villagers because you have this one gate you can go through. And this is exactly what Burgundy is going to be attacking as these uh, archers and onager from Compiègne try and def to defend. But yeah, you, you essentially just have to run everybody through and uh, hope that works. <laughs> This one does involve a lot of luck. It is pretty frustrating to do normally. It is also frustrating to speedrun. But even though if it doesn't qualify for a world record, I will show you my time that is still technically a world record. Okay, here is now going to be our very sad attempt. Well, it's actually a pretty nice attempt, but you know. You know. Doesn't qualify. So what I would do and would recommend for you guys to do if you attempt this is to put your siege first or like gather your siege first and then send them first and then your infantry which would be your pikemen and crossbowmen and uh, Lord de Graville and then uh, all your cavalry including Joan herself that way the fastest units you send over last will still get there first because they're fastest and the slowest units will you know, have the most time in which they're up and running. Anyway, it's just a little bit of a time saver. Anyway, we're going to send Joan in, like I said. She is going to very kindly knock at the gate of Paris and uh, then run away. Ding dong ditch the, uh, the English guards there. Being careful not to run into that castle and towers and stuff. Have absolutely potato control. But that's okay. Losing a crossbowman? No, not losing a crossbowman. We're way better than this. Oh, this is so sloppy. How was this my uh, my record time? <laughs> uh, anyway, everyone's just going to kind of hang out and wait for the siege to show up. Now, something that I've realized that can be improved upon in later runs, I'm not, I don't think I do this here, uh, is that you don't actually need to use your trebuchets. Uh, they just kind of slow things down with their packing and unpacking. Uh, you can just use the bombard cannons, and it's going to take uh, pretty much the same amount of time, and then you can just keep the show running. Yeah, like, the trebs are going to come in, and then the bombard cannons are, make the, the treb shots pointless. So that's something that can be improved upon even further. Anyway, that longbowman will finally die. We will get our villagers, and we will make sure that we 
do not keep Joan in the cavalry hotkey. And then we'll send forth the cavalry. Send one dude to go kill that onager. And then make sure our siege is a moving. Where are my trebuchets? Oh, and then I lose the cavalry. Cavalier. Yeah. Wow. Of all the runs, this one is the, uh... <laughs> Is, is somehow a good time, but yeah, no, I, I checked the uh, the video. Yeah, this is definitely uh, my uh, my best time. Anyway, we're gonna run to the onager and try and snipe that. You can see that as soon as we run by this area over here, the uh, the king's men uh, trigger will happen. Uh, and then we're gonna lose all of our paladins, just you know, cuz. But the important thing is uh, we're sniping the towers. And we're sniping them quite quickly. Uh, I do a good job making sure the bombard cannons are safely moving forward as quickly as possible. And that that is really, you know, above all else, the important thing here. You can try and run past the tower. Um, or the various towers. Uh, those guys have uh, yeomen and arrow slits, and they're just going to kill your villagers. So it's, it's incredibly risky. However, uh, I'm... If I recall correctly, I totally YOLO'd this and did that anyway, with at least the last tower. You can see that you're just trying to distract the uh, the ships, because those guys are really annoying. We need to have the Trebs come with us. Yeah, those villagers have died on that bridge way too many times. Oh yeah, then everyone gets stuck, and then I lose a bunch of stuff to an onager. Oh boy. Oh, this is so lucky. You, like, you can see how much of this like uh, speedrun just relies on luck. Anyway, Joan will make it over here. Then we'll uh, go and try and kill those longbowmen. Uh, but above all else, we need the trebuchets and the bombard cannons to help out with uh, the fortified wall. That monk super dodged it. Did not dodge those. Anyway, you can see that longbowmen are mostly getting cleaned up at this point. Uh, really, we now that we're past the Sen River, we really don't care about our army. Well, and that those longbowmen are dealt with. Yeah, we're gonna bring the bombard cannons up. We're gonna start to attack that wall. Just for, I don't know, the nanoseconds that saves us or something. But we're going to have the Trebs, and for some reason, I don't know if that was something I was just doing wrong, but I tried to right-click on the tree. You can see me doing it there, and it wouldn't right-click. Like, it wouldn't unpack, so I had to manually unplack, unpack them, and then target the tree once the trebuchets were completed. Uh, why that's the case, I have no idea. But, uh... You know, the, the tree's down. And like I said, everyone else for the rest of the scenario just chills in uh, in Paris. Now we're going to try and make it so that Joan and the refugees are as close together as possible. Joan has a tendency to outstrip them, being so much faster and all. But uh, no, if we trigger Burgundy too soon, then uh, the villagers are definitely going to die to random onager hits. And wait, we past that threshold, get incredibly lucky with that onager shot. Really, the moral of the story is uh, luck over skill any day of the week. But yeah, you can see that they're going right to the gates of Compiègne. And, oh man, this is so awkward. You can see that them being on neutral is kind of important here. And even one of the villagers gets kind of stuck on the other Burgundian unit, so a little bit of bad luck, but I think you know, all of the good luck we've had counterweighs that. Anyway, we just garrison everyone in the castle just to be super extra safe. But uh, we will now win, and we will get our time of 11.53. Nevertheless, uh, that was the best time we were able to get for the Siege of Paris. I definitely strongly encourage you guys to see if you can improve upon that if that is something you'd be interested. Uh, but other than that... Hope you all enjoyed. Future runs will uh, be compliant with all proper settings. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for the conclusion of Jean.